A couple of weeks ago I made this solenoid engine. The project was a lot of fun to make and the end result turned out to be really cool. In this video I'm gonna improve on it, take what I learned from this build and make a four stroke version. On the single stroke version I could make the connection between the plunger and the axle really easy by just screwing it to the side of this bushing. On the four stroke version that doesn't work because I need to have four of these so I need to make an actual crankshaft. Let's start with that. Right now they're not yet a crankshaft. I need to drill some holes in it so I can put some connecting rods in between to form the offset we need for the crankshaft. Now, to get the second hole aligned, I'm dropping a pin in here and then placing it in the previous hole. That way I know the spacing is always right. I'm going to glue this crankshaft in place like this, but before I can do that I need to make four of these connecting pieces that go in between here and then to the solenoids. I think I should maybe do it in steps. This first one. It's already solid. It's <laughs> super quick. Crankshaft needs some time to dry, so I'm gonna work on the base. And since I'm gonna put both of them probably next to each other, I'm gonna go with the same style. So a lighter wood on top and a darker wood on the bottom. The similarity in the design stays with just the base. For the front and the back I want to make it from some polycarbonate so you can see the crankshaft really nice and see what's happening. Because this is clear, it should look really nice. To make this to size I want to have the edges really smooth and I think when I cut it on the bandsaw it's going to be kind of rough. So what I'm doing, I'm making this template out of wood that I can stick on the polycarbonate and then I can cut it out on the router. Meanwhile the wood glue has dried so I can route the edges of this thing as well. What a coincidence.
These panels are going to be the front and the back of the crankshaft holder. And they're going to come like this. Crankshaft in the middle. And then over here, there will be the solenoids. So next thing I need to make is the plate that holds the solenoids. To make the plate I'm going to use this piece of aluminum. Stick a template on it and cut it out. Now for these larger holes I want to use my step bit and I think it's in here. Yeah, there it is. This one. The step bit is a really easy drill bit to drill large holes in thin materials. So for this aluminum, this is perfect. So now that I have these, I can use them to determine the hole placement on these acrylic pieces. Where they need to connect to. I love how it looks when you drill into clear material. That's number one. And then the second one will come like this over here. And then all together, it comes on here. Before I do that, I need to take this off so I can mount the bearings, mount the crankshaft. And then, but now I know it fits, so that's nice. I need to fit the bearing for the crankshaft in here like this. But since I didn't really trust the size of the drill bit to securely snap this thing in place, I'm gonna print a little bushing that snaps in here where I can press the bearing in of the printer. I'm going to make one spool first, that way I can test if the increased wire diameter that I want to use works and if the amount of wire I'm putting on it is enough. So, make me one and then I can test it. I used either too thin wire or I used too much of it, giving me a little bit too much resistance and uh, causing it to be too weak with, on 12 volts. On this new one I do want to use it at 12 volts, so I ordered a little bit thicker wire. This is 0.5 millimeters, also spools up a little bit faster, so win-win. This is around 6 ohm, that's 12 divided by 6, that's around 2 amps, so should be fine, I think. At least my power supply can handle this. For solenoid you want to have a high amperage and a high amount of winding. So it's kind of a little bit of a game with the thickness of the wire. The thicker the wire, the higher the amps, but also less winding. So it's a, a balance game. Plug it in. This is way stronger than my previous one. So now I know it works, I can make three more.
core, done. Let's get rid of this mess and then make the solenoids. Okay, one more. I don't think it's necessary to have a flywheel on this one because you have four cylinders that are always, there's always one free that can pull. I think it will run a lot smoother if there is a flywheel just to have some mass that's going around. Next up is the switching mechanism. For the switching I'm going to use the same mechanism as I used on this one, which is with the sliding contacts that sometimes make contact and sometimes don't. That when I make contact the solenoid switches, when they don't, solenoid releases. You need one for each solenoid, so the difference is that on this one I need four. So there's going to be a nice row for the sliding contacts.
If you like this video, you'll probably like this video over here as well. It's the first solenoid engine ever made with one solenoid. Hit that subscribe button before you leave, and don't forget, dare to experiment and have fun creating.